All right, back in our red books, I'm going to ask you to turn to page number 280, Silent Night, Holy Night. We'll sing the first and the last before Charlene comes and leads us in our special singing.
Now I have a special treat for you, Aaron. The 88 belongs to you, honey. 88 strings, play them all. Good job there, girl. Good job. Huh?
Ja, gå det igen. Can I have my two, my two guys with the lighters, if you will, please? That would be Caden and Logan. <laughs> Get your lighter, please. And let's light some candles. Everybody got a candle? Who said no? Victoria needs a candle. Make sure everybody's got one. Bill, you got a candle? Will you have to know how to play with fire? Anybody need a candle? Candle, candle. This is the fun part of it. They're coming around with a lighter. Light one and let it go. Anybody else need a candle? This one right here. Somebody come light this one right here. If you knock it over, you're fired. <laughs> Keep them going. When you get your candle lit, you share your flame with the neighbor. And I promise you, we will not sit tonight with about 20 minutes with the candles lit. <laughs> uh, I did that last, week, last year, and I was severely reprimanded. Not really. They're coming around. When you light your candles, pass it on. This is a, an expression of Christian faith. You pass on your faith. You pass it on. You will notice that when you do that and you give your light to somebody else, your light does not dim down. You have the same light before and after. You share your light. And you keep on doing that. As many times as you want to share your light, your light will never get dimmer than it, than it is. That's the way it is in the Christian faith. We share our lights. We share the light. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the light. And you share it with somebody else. And you'll begin to notice how much brighter it gets in here as we add more and more light to it. I would wish that there were more people here. I got that. I understand that. The ones that I talked to that said they'd be here, that's fine. That's fine. It's, they missed out on it, and so we're just, we're just going to keep right on going. And we share our light. We share the light, share the faith. You share your faith with somebody else, and then the, your light never goes out. Amen. As long as you keep doing that, that just keeps stoking the fire. That's what candlelight services are all about. They will come to you, and they will light your candle. And then you share it with somebody else. You may have to push it up through the little plastic thing there. Anybody over here need a light? Because I can't see with some of the lights that are on me. They're coming to you, whoever that is back there with a the hand. They're coming over. Are they giving you trouble over there? You share a light. Keep sharing a light. I don't have a candle that's bigger than yours for any specific reason other than the fact that it's just a symbolic light. My light is the same as yours. That's the way it is, pastor, teacher. Whomever you are, your light is just the same. You're just as saved as anybody in this building, no more and no less. Anybody need a light? Anybody got it? Anybody got it? All right, thank you. Now, I realize that the lights that you have out there, if you can look around and see what I'm seeing, you will notice that there are sporadic lights all over the place. You move into the dark areas. That's what Christian faith is all about. When you move into a dark area, you bring light to that dark area. That's the way we share our faith. We don't need a light right here. They got plenty of lights. Back there is where they need the lights, and over here is where they need the lights. So we go where the gospel is needed. Amen. 
in this church and any church that's worth the salt, that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to share the light where the light is needed. The people that are out there doing that, that's exactly the way it's all about. Share your faith. Share your light. Everybody got one? Now do as we always do. Hold it up. And you'll notice how much brighter it gets in here as you hold up your lights. You may not be able to see it like I can, but it's getting brighter as you go up. The higher you go, the brighter that light can go. Thank you. Put them down. Heavenly Father, you are Almighty God and you are the light. The light was born. We celebrate the birth of the light, the Word. We celebrate the birth of the salt of the earth. We celebrate the birth of the Christ child. Now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you right now will speak to every person here. Give us this time that we can share our light and give us that opportunity to do that. We give you all the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, would you, Dale, take care of us on the lights? Snuff out your candles, please. That's something you will never do in the Christian faith. Your candle cannot be snuffed out. It's not your candle. It's not your light. It belongs to the light of this world. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and get the middle ones on too, brother, if you don't mind. I'm going to leave this one on because if I blow on it right good, it'll probably fall over, and I don't want to do that. Uh, I want to share a couple of thoughts with you tonight. A group of us went down to Severe Heights Baptist Church last week, I guess it was to see the Christmas musical that they did, such a beautiful job that they did. And the pastor shared a wonderful message of the manger scene and the thoughts that we have because of the manger scene. There are laws that are coming that you cannot put these manger scenes on public property. And there are laws that are coming that you cannot put these manger scenes even on private property if it can be seen by the public. And I just, I feel so sorry for people who get so easily offended that the Christ child offends them. They, they are to be pitied. They are to be prayed for. They really are. The manger scene is not authentic as such. It was not a manger like that. It was an old cold stone slab, a feeding trough. The wise men were not there. They came two years later, but we always put the wise men in there. So a well-balanced manger scene always has a manger. It always has a baby in the manger. It always has the holy couple, Mary, and of course her husband. He took her as his wife, did not know her uh, maritally until she gave birth, or, gave birth to her firstborn son, but she was there. And so the holy couple was there. Shepherds were there. The animals were there. And uh, the wise men came in. We always put those people in there. Let me ask you a question. What would it be if the baby didn't show up? This is not the message I preached two weeks ago. But what would it be? What would you think? You guys are shepherds. What are you thinking? You get to the, you get to the manger scene and there's no baby. Tell me what's going on in your mind. What are you thinking? Who wants to be first? Logan, Caden, who wants to be first? What are you thinking? Oh, the angel told you there was a baby. So the angel lied to them. But angels can't lie, can they? No. They are holy beings. They're not God. They're not deity. But they, what else, what else are you thinking? Where is the baby? He is not here. Well, there have been people who have looked for Jesus. Where is he? He was supposed to be in the tomb, but he wasn't in the tomb. But he is supposed to be in the manger. A very famous disc jockey, I've mentioned this to you before, very famous radio personality, name is Don Imus. I don't know if he's still alive or not. But uh, he made the statement, I am down with the baby Jesus, but not so much with the man he grew into be. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you're not down with the man, Christ Jesus, Jesus the Christ, there's no hope for you. 
There is no hope until you get down with the baby Jesus and with the man, Jesus Christ. And that is an expression that people use today. Are you down with him? He was in the manger. Suppose, uh, let's see here. A couple of wise men right in here. The wise man, wise man, wise, wise lady with them and wise man. What are you all thinking? You get there. You've traveled two years. You got all this caravan. You got all this gold and silver, uh, not silver, uh, frankincense and myrrh. And you get there and the baby's not there. What are you thinking? Where is he? Shelly? Jordan? I've never seen you at a loss for words before, brother. The Bible must be wrong because they said he was supposed to be in Bethlehem. Well, we don't have a Bible yet. The priest told you where to go. Oh, the Bible said that the Old Testament Bible said to go. Well, you're right. Okay. So you're thinking all this time, he didn't show up. He didn't show up. What if you were the angels? You've been practicing that song. Now, here's a couple of angels right over here. Loretta and, and Charlene. A couple of, Braley, you can be in this too. You're an angel. Uh, you've been practicing that song for, for what is it, 2,000 years. Glory, hallelujah. You get a chance finally to sing it. And Gabriel says, all right, on the downbeat, let's go, let's sing it. And he leads you in the singing that song. And, and you get there and the baby's no baby. What are you thinking? Oh, yeah, what a bummer. What a bummer. I have practiced for 2,000 years on a song that doesn't mean a thing. If there is no baby. I have been practicing this song he promised me that the baby would be there. He promised me. And we practiced it. And we've given up our free time and our fishing time and all that to come out to choir practice to practice this one song. And we get a chance to sing this one song to a bunch of scruffy shepherds out there in a the field near Bethlehem. And we get there and the baby's not there. That's right. He is there, isn't he, Steve? There you go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We have a living Savior. The only song I ever heard my dad record was, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's what? He's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. Stop right there. What does impart mean? Give. Cement down. Drive your stakes in the ground. Salvation to impart. You got a salvation that came from the baby in the crib who grew up to be the Savior. He gave you a salvation that you can go to the bank on. You can count on it because he did come. He was in the manger and he did grow to be the Christ child. He was always the Christ child, but he grew to be Jesus the Christ. Where were we? Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And he came. And we celebrate that birth. I'll give you a thought. I don't know if this, is, this, this preach is good. It's like we preachers say this kind of preach is good. We don't know when Jesus was born, do we? We don't really sure about that. Somebody said that December 25th. Other people say it could have been September. How many months between December and September? Between December and September. So could it be, could it be that we celebrate the virgin conception in September? Could it be that there's a nine month period of time in there from December around to September. Could that be the time? Could it be that we've been celebrating the conception as, as well as the birth and not really realizing it? Because both of them were of a virgin. She remained a virgin. She remained a virgin until she brought forth her firstborn son. Could it be 
I think sometimes we, we say this is the way it always was, but we're not really sure about that. One thing I do know for sure, he came. Those angels weren't mistaken, were you? The shepherds weren't mistaken, were you? Wise guys, you weren't mistaken, were you? He was there. He came. You brought those gifts and you presented them to the Christ child. Even the birds and the fish and the animals all around it were probably all singing glory, hallelujah. The trees were clapping their hands by saying the Savior has come. The trees were singing hallelujah. Oh, it's amazing that because Jesus Christ did come. That's what we celebrate tonight, tomorrow, and quite frankly for the rest of our life. Tomorrow, I've shared this with our choir Tomorrow, from 9.30 until 11.30, I will be on a radio station in Wartburg that I have never played my kind of music on before. I told them when I went to work at that radio station that I was not going to play country music. I was going to play gospel music, and that was the way it was going to have to be. And so for 13 years or so while I was down there, I did that. And then for 15 years since I've been here, I've been sending it back to them and playing gospel time music on that station. I got a call just past week or so. I said, Bridge Tom, if you will record me a program of your kind of music and you do it, I'm going to play it on big FM station, big country station, 200,000 watts. It will reach out to all over the people. And I'm asking for your prayers. We are reaching out to people tomorrow between 9.30 and 11.30. You are reaching out to these people through that radio ministry because you allow me the time to do that. And Bobby, I appreciate the fact that you've made the tape. You've, you've got the tape ready to go and all that. I appreciate it so very much. Guys, we're just trying to get the message out. That's all we're trying to do. It's nothing glorifying anybody here except Jesus the Christ. Pray with me now. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask your blessings to be upon this opportunity of night. We know that you came. We are well aware that you came, and we, we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for that. Be with us now, Lord, throughout this night. Help us as we enjoy our Christmas festivities with our children, with our families, the meals and the gifts and all the songs that go on, on the radio and all those things. But after all... It's because of the Christ child. It's because of the baby in the manger who grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men and became the Savior on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for that. Bless this opportunity of ministry. Bless this church and thank you for it. Be with us now, Lord, in a very special way as we go our ways tonight and bring us back into the places of worship that we go to every Sunday. And we'll give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you folks. You were dismissed to go.